Okay, so you want to try out some astrophotography. Well, you are in the right place. Tag along with me and I will show you everything you need to know to get started with this awesome hobby. My name is Jorgo, I am a long-time photographer and a lifelong interest in astrophotography with a master's degree in astronomy and physics. So this video is for you that want to get started with this awesome hobby and the good news is you probably already have everything you need at home. Astrophotography is fun, there are so many things to see and there are so many things to explore. but you're gonna need the right stuff and the right knowledge to do so. I'm gonna walk you through everything you need to know to get started and hopefully you'll be out there shooting some nice, cool astrophotography images. The first thing you're gonna need is one of these. This is the Benpro, mm, Benpro IT27 and it's a small lightweight aluminum tripod that I usually carry around with me when I go out hiking and photographing, uh, trying to keep it as light as possible. The second thing that you're gonna need is attaching something up here. And that is one of these. Now this is the Canon 5D Mark III. It's a DSLR, but basically any camera will do. Um, you just attach a lens to it, preferably around 100 millimeters uh, to get started with something use your fastest lens that you have because astrophotography is all about collecting data and doing it during a long time so with a faster lens you're getting more photons per time unit and you're increasing your chances to get something good out of the hours that you're spending out there now you have your tripod you have your camera and now it's time to do some photography first off you're gonna need to find the target that you're shooting and there are some awesome software out there that you can just browse around the night sky and see what's out there and pick something. I would recommend you picking something easy like the Andromeda Galaxy or the Moon. Those two targets are really easy and you can find them online where to look for them. They are just plain old RGB targets, meaning that you can use whatever camera you need. You don't have to have any modifications being done with your camera. This is for beginners, modifications are for a little bit more advanced users. So just take your camera, aim for the Andromeda Galaxy or the Moon and just start shooting. One of the difficulties with astrophotography is that the Earth is rotating. And for us, that rotation means that the stars are moving during the night. So you can't just point your camera towards your target, click on the button, and take one picture and be over with it. No, it doesn't work that way. What you need to do is to figure out how long you can take one single exposure on your target without getting the star trails, meaning that the star is just a point and not a line in the sky. And that is fairly easy to do. You use the rule of 500, meaning that you take the focal length of your lens. In my case, it's a 100 millimeter lens and you take 500 divided by the focal length, 500 divided by 100 gives me five, meaning that I can use this lens for five seconds at a time pointing at the stars without getting star trails. And to be sure that I'm not getting any star trails, I just use four seconds instead. So I point my stuff towards the target that I wanna shoot. I center it in my frame. I take a four second shot. I take another four second shot. I'll probably manage to take like two to four four second shots before the framing has gone off. So what I need to do is that I need to reframe the target again and then do the same procedure all over again. And yeah, I know. That sounded really tedious, didn't it? But the fact remains that you're going to have to do this enough times so you have like aggregated three to 10 minutes of total data in these four second intervals for you to have an image to be really proud of. 
Oh, by the way, if you like this content, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to see more of what I'm doing, don't forget to subscribe. That's the thing with astrophotography. It is difficult, it is hard, you're fighting elements, you're fighting the Earth's rotation, but it is so much fun. Now, after a while, you'll probably get tired of taking hundreds and hundreds of photographs just to get to like the two, three minutes total exposure time. And that's when you go and do this. You invest in something that compensates for the Earth's rotation following the stars correctly. This is the Star Adventure 2i Wi-Fi Pro and it's a so-called star tracker. This one rotates during the night at the exact same pace as the sky or the Earth rotates and you can get pin sharp stars at around 30 seconds of exposure time. This setup is probably more for intermediate to advanced for astrophotographers but you'll probably end up with one of these if you're really serious with this hobby and you want to collect more data to see even more faint stuff that is out there. And of course, let's say you are in love with this hobby like I am, you will eventually probably end up with something like this. So this is more of a professional setup. Now, don't be fooled by the length of this telescope. Basically, any focal length will do. This particular one is at 800 millimeters, but I am using 85 millimeters. I am using 200 millimeters. The thing with this setup is that the tracker is updated. It's a really, really good tracker that works flawlessly. And also you have a lot of extra stuff attached to it um, for you to automize your astrophotography. Because as I've already mentioned, astrophotography is about collecting a lot of data and you can't just sit around and wait for the data to come. You'll probably put these things out on autopilot and let it do the work for you. And you can go to sleep, have a great night's sleep and wake up in the morning with freshly new data for you to process. Post-processing the data is an entire different video, but in general, what you need to do is you take your few hundred images you're stacking them together into one single image using software like Cyril or Linkios, for instance. Those are free. You can just download them directly and try them. And when you have stacked them, you are going to need to post-process them and stretch them out, meaning that you're pulling out the data, bringing your subject that you have photographed to focus. And to do that, there's a free alternative called GIMP that you can download and try directly. So you stack your images using Cyril or Linkios, and then you stretch your data, bringing out the subject using GIMP, for instance. And as I mentioned, that is an entirely different video, but now you know everything you need to know to go out on a clear night and do some astrophotography. It is really fun, I can promise you that.